American Choir Sings About Kimchi. Ideal Destination for Traveling Alone, Taiwan. Turning Trash into Art. Foreign Hanji Artist. Providing access to water in Africa. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Semi. A Chinese grandmother has completed a porcelain palace after five years of work. The palace is a museum exhibiting porcelain ware that she's been collecting for the past 50 years. Construction began when UMI reached the age of 80. And Yu was involved in everything from planning and designing to completing construction. Working hard for your dream is truly beautiful, and age does not matter. UMI from China reminds us of that. Now, what's your lifelong dream? How close are you to making it your reality? On that note, let's start with our first story of the day. There's a choir in San Jose, California that sings only Korean songs. The members initially sang in Korean in order to study the language, but now the choir is being invited to events big and small. Let's hear their original composition, Kimchi Sarang. People of different race and age sing Kimchi Sarang or Kimchi Love. The audience soon sings along thanks to the catchy rhythm and easy lyrics. There aren't any Korean members, but the choir sings only in Korean. Uh, China, um, Africa, um, just different people from different countries, and it was really inspirational to watch them sing and see how much fun they were having singing the kimchi song. Created three years ago, the choir is composed of members from different walks of life. However, they all love Korean culture and want to learn the Korean language. Singing, learning a song is a really great way for something to stick in your memory. I knew that if I learned songs in Korean, I would never forget it and I could never you know, the language, it's easy to lose a language if you stop practicing, but a song you never forget. The founder and leader of the choir is Korean language teacher and expatriate Ku In Hee. She taught the members Korean every week, and where there was time left, she'd play Korean songs. She also composed and sang original songs about Korean culture. 그래서 김치나 어떤 한글이나 직지나 이런 부분을 한국 사람이 이렇게 말을 하는 것보다는 전파를 하는 것보다는 미국 사회의 주류 사회의 한국 문화가 더 전파가 잘될 거라고 믿었기 때문에 The choir also planned to give a performance in Korea this coming October. Moving on to the next story, if you were to travel alone, where would you go? There are many things to consider, but more than anything else, personal safety will need your utmost attention. And Taiwan meets all the safety criteria. Let's find out more. Angela, a French citizen of Vietnamese heritage, is here in Taipei, Taiwan on her own for the first time. Time flies as she enjoys the night market, and it's already 10 p.m. Why did Angela decide to visit Taiwan on her first ever solo trip? I came to Taiwan because uh, I didn't. I heard it was really safe, so I wanted to see it by myself and uh, visit all the famous places and eat the Taiwanese food. When the sun sets, Taiwan lights up. Police are on patrol 24 hours a day to keep an eye out for the residents and tourists who are just as active at night as in during the day. Officers patrol not only residential areas but also commercial areas and places with high crime rates every two to three hours. 
我觉得很安全啊。像比如说，我有时候下班比较晚的时候啊，要回家，那常看到警车在巡逻，我都觉得很安心。There are 16,000 surveillance cameras installed all over Taipei. Taipei is only half as big as Seoul in terms of area, and its population is only one fourth of that of Seoul. But both cities have a similar number of surveillance cameras. Since 2008, when the Taipei government began installing surveillance cameras in earnest, arrest rates of burglars climbed steadily, nearing 100%. We from the original 2009 year rental rate. 的破获率只有百分之三十，到建设完成二零一二年那个时候提高到百分之七十八，那直到去年二零一四年，我们的住宅窃盗率的破获率是百分之九十八，几乎到百分之一百了。Taiwan's National Police Agency is actively communicating with the citizens via social media and applications. The agency is bringing down the barrier between itself and the people and promptly providing essential information regarding crime. 国警察他们在推动的就是警察跟人民的互动，啊，社区警政。那我们的警政署长最高领导人他自己成立一个 F B， 那这个 F B 任何人都可以上上这个跟跟我们的最高领导互动。你只要对治安有好的需求，有好的建议。A country where the people know that they are safe and protected. This is another reason why many solo travelers are selecting Taiwan as their destination. Our next story takes us to France. Waste is a major issue all across the world. One group of French people came up with the idea of buying discarded articles and making crafts with them. They were able to sell these recycled goods. Now, let's take a closer look. This is a recycled goods store in Paris, France. People come and go non-stop. Kitchenware with unique and colorful designs catch the eye. This store is called Le Surusserie, meaning an eco-friendly shop. The crafts sold here are actually made of discarded materials. Objects destined for the trash can are reborn into creative works. C'est un super endroit et je trouve que il faut vraiment chercher pour trouver ça à Paris. From paper boxes to empty bottles and old furniture, this shop's front yard is filled with unusable goods. They are valuable resources that have been donated or sold by Paris residents and are used to make handicrafts. When these items pile up, employees use their creativity and imagination to transform the trash into new goods. A chair and a carpet came together to become a living room chair. C'est vraiment de lutter durablement pour une meilleure gestion des déchets. Quatre mois, on avait déjà détourné 30 tonnes, et du coup, là, on est à presque sept mois d'activité et on est à pratiquement 70 tonnes de déchets retournés. People started coming to the store once the shop released ads saying that it would buy trash. Many who come to sell trash return as customers after seeing the crafts on display. Thanks to such interest, within less than a year, some 120 branches opened up all over France. I'm not a centaine of people who come every day to buy for chimie and others who come really by militantism. Pour faire un geste justement vers la planète et quelque chose qui a du sens, un achat responsable. La Le Surusserie holds fashion accessory and plate making classes using recycled trash every Saturday. These workshops highlight how anyone can reuse goods instead of throwing them out. These ribbons and accessories are all from clothes that have been thrown out. C'est pour ça que, enfin, c'est pour ça aussi que je suis venue. Ouais, le, le concept m'a plu en allant sur le, le site internet également. C'est euh, comme ça qu'effectivement je suis venue. Sinon... The movement created by La Ressourcerie is a new eco-friendly art born in France, the country of art.
Continuing on, there's a foreigner who has fallen in love with hanji, or Korean traditional paper, and spent the past 10 years promoting it. She is hanji artist John Covening. Let's find out more about her. This is a small portable table and a sewing box that both feature Korean traditional patterns. The viewers are mesmerized by the simple yet elegant hanji crafts. This is an exhibition in Melbourne, Australia at a Korean cultural festival. The master craftsperson behind these works is everyday homemaker Jan Kovny. Kovny came to Korea 15 years ago accompanying her English teacher husband and discovered hanji or Korean traditional paper. Hanji is colored with dye and feels just as pleasant as fiber, making it ideal for practical use. I love the way that the paper, you can mold it over the top of the cardboard and, and every piece that I make is, is different depending on which papers I choose and which designs. Following her time in Korea, Kafni lived in India, Malaysia and the United Arab Emirates, but she never stopped making works of hanji. She has conveyed the beauty of hanji to those around her and has about 40 followers all over the world. I want hanji better known in Australia and I want people to know how wonderful it is and how wonderful the uh, hanji paper is, the Korean handmade paper. Kafni has always felt the need for English books dedicated to hanji. She plans to publish one by the end of this year. It is time for our last story of the day. Did you know that one out of every nine people on our planet does not have access to clean water? Consequently, one child dies every 20 seconds due to waterborne diseases. A Korean-American has risen to the challenge of providing a sustainable system to those without access to clean water. Let's see how this is done. This is Cameron in Africa. People are dancing and singing in a festive atmosphere. They're celebrating the installation of a water supply service in their village. The children dip their hands into the stream of flowing water. They can cup fresh water in their small hands. Their faces beam with happiness. We don't have water. We have to go right down to the bush to go and fetch water. So we go down a deep, a slope, a very high hill. Our children suffer. They go to school late because of the water that they get to in the morning, they can go three, four times in the morning. The installation was made possible thanks to the efforts of New York-based Korean-American Sophia Sanu and her associates. Sanu founded a non-profit organization called Water Collective in 2011 to help developing countries facing water shortages. Poverty-related pro problem, if you don't have water at the base, you will ne never get anything else done. If you don't have clean water, you can't give students proper education because, you know, they're in class and they're, you know, very thirsty or they're getting sick from the water that they're drinking, so they, they can't have good education. Water Collective provides systematic education covering everything from teaching what kind of water can be consumed to how to supply water. The organization aims to give communities water independence, breaking the system of dependence on external organizations. Sanu was a mastermind behind the analysis of previous failures and the creation of Water Collective's own methods. Sanu fell back on her past experience running a clothing business and analyzed the problems other organizations faced. She's. Um fierce and incredibly dedicated to what we're doing and it helps keep me motivated to you know when we do come through any of the difficulties that we do face you know there's many many charities go out of business or don't succeed 
but uh, through her leadership. And Seminal endeavors are now taking place in India. We've served 76,000 people in West Africa. We have six staff in Cameroon, um, and we're expanding to India this year. Sandra continues to work towards providing clean, safe water in parched lands. She hopes that our efforts will allow an additional 3 million people to gain access to clean water over the next 10 years. I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. Over in England, a small group of boys from Long Hill High School in East Sussex wore skirts to school in protest of having to wear long pants even on hot days. Despite their bold protest, the school insisted that all students follow uniform regulations. At the moment, the school is out for summer vacation, but I wonder what will happen when the students return. Personally, I hope that the students will be allowed to wear shorts. Going Global will be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.